Hello world, welcome to learning Java, one byte at a time. This is video 23 in a tutorial series geared at bringing the wonderful wide world of Java to those with little or no programming experience. Now that we've covered the basics of error handling and file handling, it's time to finally start writing our car DB class. That's the car database class, which is going to be in charge of managing the files, saving the car files and loading the car files for our car blue book application. Now the car DB class is going to reside in the database layer of our programming architecture. And as we learned before in prior videos, the database layer interacts uh, directly with the business layer. And that's going to be where all the logic is handled. And the business layer is going to interact directly with the presentation layer. And that's going to be the design and interface, what, uh, which interacts with the user. And so the car database class is going to be fairly simple by concept, but maybe a little complex by design. So if we jump right in here to our Notepad++ application, you see I have a file here called cardb.java. This is going to be the car database class. First thing we need to do is we need to make sure to include it in the correct package, which we've already established is going to be car blue book. Next, we're going to make a couple of import statements. From the Java IO library, we're going to import the file object. And from the same library, we're going to import the file writer object. This will allow us to create and write to files. And because uh, working with files is prone to throwing exceptions, we're going to need to import from the same library the two exceptions that they're prone to throw, which are the file not found exception and the general uh, input output exception. And finally, we're going to need to import from the Java utility library the scanner object because that's what we're going to use to actually read the files as we load them. And so that's all of the imports that we're going to need. Next, we'll go ahead and declare our class. CarDB is what we're going to name it, the same as the name of the file. And we're going to declare three uh, static integers. We're going to need to declare the index of the make the model and the price of whichever car data we're going to be pulling into or pushing out of this file. And so let's go ahead and make these private static ints. And we'll call it make index, uh, model index, and price index. All right. So the CarDB class is going to have two basic methods. The first method is going to be the save car data method, and the second is going to be the load car data method. And both of these methods are going to be called by the uh, business layer. And so the save car data method is the first one we're going to write, and we're going to start by declaring it as a public static. And since we are saving the car data, we're not going to have to return anything. So it's going to be a void method. We'll call it save car data. However, we do need to accept information. We're going to need to accept the data that's going to be saved and the name of the file we're going to save it to. And so the data is going to be in a string array that we're going to call car data. And the name of the file will also be in a string that we're going to call data file. Now that we have that method declared, complete with its parameters, we will start by um, instantiating a try block and inside the try block we're going to need to try to create a new file the name of the file that we're passing through and so we're going to create a file object called car data file a name of our choosing and using the new keyword we're going to construct a new one from the file object we imported and it's going to want to know the name of the file and that's going to be passed through the parameter right here that we're going to reference as data file. Not really sure what it's going to be called at any given time. We just know that we're going to reference it by the name data file. And then we're going to have a couple of clauses. So if the car data file was able to create a new file, we're going to print out to the system that it was successful. And then we'll append the name of the file that was created, like so. 
using the um, get name parameter of the file object. And if it wasn't successful, well, we'll just say so. Assuming that the file was um, already created or already present, we'll let them know that it's a duplicate file. And just as before, we're going to append the name of the file that the user was attempting to create. And then in our catch block is where we'll handle the other possibility, which is that for whatever reason, it just wasn't able to create the file. And that's going to be our IO exception. We're going to catch, we're going to reference it as E. We're going to let the user know that for whatever reason, it was not able to create this file. Could not create file. And then we're going to best programming practice, print to the stack trace, the nature of the error, like so. All right, so that handles the first try catch block and the creation of the file the user is attempting to save their car data file to. Then we're going to need to write another try catch block. And in this one, we're going to actually attempt to write to the file the data that the user passed through in the parameters in the string array that we're calling car data. And so in this try catch block, we will go ahead and declare a file writer object that we'll just call writer, a name of our choosing. And we'll use the new keyword to construct a new one from the file writer object. And it's going to want to know which file it's going to be writing to. And we already have that passed through in the parameters and it's being called a data file. Next, we're going to need to set up a simple loop. And so we'll declare an integer called i, and we'll set it equal to zero. This is gonna be the initial conditions of the loop, that i is less than the car data string integer that we pass through. And so we'll use the dot length to get the length of that because we don't really know if it's going to be more than three at any given time. We know that initially it's going to be three, but this program may scale, and so it may be instances where it's going to be greater than three, so we'll just sort of be ready, we'll be ready for that. And then we're going to increment i. And so within this loop, having i start off, start off as zero, and assuming it's not greater than the length of the data file we're trying to write to, we will then use our created writer object that we've called writer, and use the method that it inherited called write. And we're gonna have to pass through where it's writing. And it's going to be the string array that we pass through. It's going to be car data in the index i. So this is gonna be based on whichever uh, loop it's in. And then we will, for formatting purposes, pass through a new line character. And that way, as it writes each um, individual piece of information to the file, it will also perform that carriage return so that it won't all just be um, concatenated on the same line. And that is going to be the end of the loop. And best practice is we're going to reference our object, the writer object, and we're going to close that object. And we will print out to the system that if we've gotten this far, it means everything was successful. like so. All right, now, if that didn't work, we will have our catch, which will be catching the IO exception that we'll call E. And inside this catch block, we will just let the user know that something went wrong. Essentially, could not write to file. And we'll go ahead and print to the stack trace as well. Okay, and so that's going to be the try catch block for our 
um, write method. And so that should be everything we need. And I just want to point out that these um, these messages to the console that we're printing out are going to be simply for the uh, testing purposes as we build this application. And eventually any sort of uh, message to the console or interaction with the user is going to be offloaded to everything in the presentation layer. And so whichever class we're going to write that's going to be in the presentation layer will handle all of the messages to the console and we'll actually end up having to go back and remove these out. But as we build this program, we're going to need some sort of practical way to test it. And this is just a good way to let us know that as we're testing it, that it is in fact working as expected. All right, so that's going to complete the method that's going to be in charge of saving our car data. Next, let's write the method that's going to be in charge of loading our car data. This is also going to be a public static method. And now instead of void, this one is actually going to return a string array because as we load the car data, we're going to actually load it into a string array the same way as we've accepted the car data as we save it. And so whatever comes in is how it goes out. And the only parameter we're going to need to accept is going to be the name of the file that we're attempting to load. We'll call that data file just as before, just for simplicity. And in here, we will declare a string array that we'll call car data array. And this will be the array that we return after we've loaded this array with whatever data we were able to parse out of the file. So we'll set this equal to a new string array of three, because we know there's going to be the make, model, and price of the car that we're going to be loading. And then we will go ahead and build a try catch block. In this try block, we're going to create a file object that we're going to call car data file, a name of our choosing, and using the new keyword, we're going to create, we're going to construct one from scratch using the file object. And all it needs to know is the name of the file that we're attempting to create from, which is data file, the parameter being passed in, just as we did when we were saving the car data. Then we're going to declare our scanner object and we'll just name it in and we'll set it equal to a new scanner except as before instead of the system.in we're going to give it the file we're going to be reading which is the car data file then a simple loop to iterate through the file and begin to read from it we'll declare an integer that we'll call i equal to zero we will make sure that our scanner object in actually has a next line to read and as long as it does the loop will iterate and we will increment i and just as in the save file we're going to be using i as a reference to the index of the string array and this is sort of just everything in reverse so the car data array of index i we are going to set equal to whatever our scanner object finds in the next line. Presumably first going to be the make, then the next line after that will be the model, then the next line after that will be the price. And at that point, the object, or I'm sorry, our scanner object that we're calling in dot has next line will prove equal to false because it won't have any more information in the file and we will break out of this loop. Assuming that all went well, we will then use our scanner object to close the file. So now let's write our catch block to handle any exceptions thrown. We'll assume that there's a possible file not found exception that might happen. Maybe we're trying to load a file that's not there. And that's going to be an easy handle. We'll simply let the user know, could not load file. And we will print that to the stack trace for good measure. All right. Now, if we did not have to end up using the catch block, then that means that the write was successful, or the, I'm sorry, the load was successful and that we were successfully able to write all of the pieces of information to the car data array, in which case we have an array to return. So we will return the car data array as such. And that will be the end of the method and that will be the end of the class. 
All right, and so for all intents and purposes, there's not a practical way to test this just right now to show you that it works because we haven't yet written the logic that's going to be interfacing with it. And so just take this on good faith that this is the this is going to be the functional database class and for whatever reason we run into some errors as we're working with the logic that uses it we'll go back and re-edit it so we'll probably end up keeping it open um, but I have gone through and tested this already so I'm pretty confident that this is going to work I just apologize that I don't have a, a practical way to actually demonstrate that this is going to work hopefully though that the um, the writing of this class file was fairly clear and that there weren't too many um, too many uh, you know, ambiguous notions being presented here. Of course, the uh, comment section is a great way to message me. If there are any questions or issues, we can definitely tackle them together. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing everyone back again in the next video where we will begin to write the business layer, the logic class that's going to be interacting with this class. Hope everyone enjoyed the video. Hope it was fun and educational, and I can't wait to see everyone back again in the next video. Thank you so much, and have a beautiful night.